Hi, my name is Amin. One of the ways in which Pure Storage has always differentiated itself is with our ultra-efficient, low overhead snapshot technology. We continue to build products based on this technology to meet the growing and evolving needs of our customers. In this section, I'm going to talk about one such product, the Snap to NFS feature. This Snap to NFS feature allows flash arrays to natively back themselves up to a heterogeneous NFS target for the following benefits. Number one, it is natively built into the flash array. Number two, it is extremely simple to use. Number three, it prevents vendor lock-in. What I mean by the last point is that you can choose any NFS device to back up your data to from the flash array. So for example, for extremely fast and efficient backups, you could use the Pure Storage Flash Blade product. You could also use a third-party NAS product or a disk to disk backup product. And lastly, you could use a generic Linux server. The idea is to keep snapshots on the flash array for a short period of time and then to offload them to a cheaper NFS target for long time retention. The Snap to NFS feature uses the portable snapshot technology. These portable snapshots can be recovered to either the flash array that backed up the data or to any other pure flash array. In addition, to save time, space, and bandwidth, our purity operating environment calculates the incremental changes between snapshots. So once the baseline has been established, we only move the delta changes for each subsequent snapshot, and that helps us save a lot of time and space, and it provides the users a very short backup window. To save even more space and time, we use compression technology and we send compressed data over the wire and to the NFS target. So the NFS target may not even have its own compression technology. It may be a cheap Linux box, but it will still benefit from the space savings of our compressed snapshots. Setting up and administering the Snap to NFS is a simple three-step process. The first step is to create an NFS export, making sure to give read-write permission to the flash array that will be accessing the NFS uh, device. Step two is to connect the flash array to the NFS device. Once the NFS device is connected to the flash array, it appears in the flash array GUI as just an additional target for replication. So if you have used the flash array to flash array replication technology that we have in the past, this would look very familiar. Once this is set up, the third and final step is for the data that you want replicated, set up a schedule to A, decide how frequently you want to take snapshots and replicate onto the NFS target, and B, how long you want to retain the data on the NFS target. And that's it. That's the three-step process for setting up and configuring Snap to NFS. The backup process, I'm sorry, the restore process is just as simple. Let me walk you through the restore process for a specific use case. Suppose a DBA wants to access data that has been deleted from the flash array, but it still exists on the NFS target. In order to access the data, he will have to go through the following three steps. Step number one, is to identify and restore the snapshot from the NFS target to the flash array. So for this, the user will go into the flash array and browse through the snapshots that are located on the NFS target. They will identify the volume they want to restore and the specific snapshot of that volume. Since each snapshot is timestamped, they decide how far back in time they want to go. Once they have identified and restored that snapshot onto the flash array, it is now a local snapshot. So step number two is to create a volume from that snapshot. Now there are two options. You can either create a new volume from the snapshot or you can overwrite an existing volume. Since overwriting an existing volume 
could mean destruction of data. We prevent accidental overwrites. So first of all, if somebody's creating an overwrite volume, they have to choose the overwrite option. And secondly, even after they choose the option, they will get a warning message, and they have to accept that warning if they want to overwrite an existing volume. So once the volume has been created, the third step is simply to go into that volume and access the data that you need. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more Lightboard videos on the Flash Array.